On today's Star Wars lore video, we take a closer look at the Battle of Jakku. Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars canon lore video. Today we are continuing our trends of looking closely at the major battles of the Star Wars universe with a look at the Battle of Jakku. The Battle of Jakku was one of the defining moments of the Galactic Civil War. With the Empire's defeat by the New Republic, the Galactic Concordance was signed and formal fighting ended. In reality, the Empire's loss at Jakku was planned by Imperial Counselor Gallius Rax, but that's a topic for a different video. Given the importance of the conflict here, Jakku has been portrayed in various media, including the Aftermath books and Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2. In this video, we'll look at every confirmed ship type that participated and I'll also make some speculations about other ships that were likely there. Let's start first with a look at the Empire and the largest ship that participated at the battle. The Empire in canon originally had at least a dozen Executor class Super Star Destroyers. At the Battle of Jakku, the Ravager participated. The Ravager was the final Super Star Destroyer under full control by the Empire other than the Mysterious Eclipse and it was the flagship of the Imperial fleet at Jakku. The Empire's forces huddled around the massive dreadnought and it seemed indestructible. However, some clever planning by the New Republic and state-of-the-art Starhawk capital ships managed to take the Ravager down. Alongside the Ravager, it's unsurprising that the heart of the Empire's fleet was their Imperial class Star Destroyers. We don't know specifically how many the Empire had here. Sometimes it seems like more than Endor, sometimes it seems like less. We also don't know whether there were Imperial 2s and 1s, although that is likely. But regardless, by the end of the battle, many of them, including Admiral Versio's Eviscerator, ended up completely destroyed. There is also mention of an Interdictor class cruiser named the Glaciate. Those are all of the Imperial capital ships that we know participated, that have been explicitly confirmed there. It's likely that the Empire also made use of some smaller ships, perhaps Victory class Star Destroyers, perhaps some Carrick light cruisers, but we don't know for sure. For starfighters, pretty much every known canon Imperial starfighter type participated at this battle. We had TIE Defenders, TIE Strikers, TIE Fighters, TIE Interceptors, and Bombers. It's my hope that as this battle continues to be fleshed out by later works, the Imperial capital ships will be given as much variety as the fighters. I was honestly really hoping for a good interpretation of this battle within Star Wars Battlefront 2, but I was ultimately very disappointed. Looking now at the New Republic, we have more or less the standard rebel affair, with some notable exceptions. The first is the presence of three Starhawk class capital ships, the Amity, the Concord, and the Unity. The Concord is the most notable of these vessels as it was the ship of Kirsta Agate and was used to take down the Ravager. We've never seen a Starhawk, although we do know that they're state of the art. They're made out of old Imperial Star Destroyers and they have extremely powerful gravity generators. Next, the New Republic also fielded many MC-80 Liberty and Home One type cruisers. It's said that the New Republic at this point actually had more cruisers than before the Battle of Endor. It seems like the Mon Cal ships made up the majority of the fleet. The Home One itself, the MC-80A used by Admiral Akbar, did participate in the battle as well. The ship itself and Akbar actually played an important role in the battle. For one, they helped assault the Ravager, and generally they coordinated New Republic forces. Below those, as I said, we had the standard Rebel Fair, ships that participate in literally every battle like the Nebulon B, the CR-90, the GR-75. But we also have ships that the Aftermath book calls Assault Frigates. Within Star Wars Legends, Assault Frigates were modified Dreadnought class cruisers. I think it's fairly likely that these are meant to be the same thing. There was also the Sunspire, a so-called Alderaanian Escort Frigate. Of course, the Raider II class Corvette, the Corvus from Star Wars Battlefront. And that's pretty much it, some good capital ship diversity for the New Republic. The New Republic had a load of starfighters. There were several X-Wing groups, including Red Squadron, Phantom Squadron, the group led by Wedge Antilles, and which included Temin Wexley, and others. We also know for a fact that there were A-Wings, Y-Wings, B-Wings, and U-Wing transports. Unfortunately, at one point in the battle, Mr. Bones, droid of Temin Wexley, is actually irreparably damaged by some A-Wings 
of the New Republic. Notably, the Millennium Falcon did not participate in battle, although there was a mysterious YT-1300 freighter whose identity was unknown. With that, I think I've pretty much covered every vehicle used at least offensively during the Battle of Jakku by both the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. Besides for shuttles, did I miss anything? Let me know down in the comment section. And of course, let me know any future video ideas that you guys have. For those interested, I posted a video on my second channel about how to grow on YouTube. This is a question that, as a fairly successful YouTuber, I get a lot. So if you guys are interested in that at all, I'll put a link up in the top right corner and also down in the comment section. Anyway, thank you guys for your time. As always, this has been Eckhart's Letter. May the Force be with you.